good morning good morning everyone welcome to the solutions for the ninth video on the homework portal let us begin with it without wasting our time you see whether my ppt is loaded yes it's loaded okay it's not been shared okay let me share it across right okay now start okay so this is my ninth video and if you want to see the rest of the videos in the homework, you can just log on to this particular site and you can navigate and you will be able to see homework portal. So in one of the videos, I have clearly explained as how to get the, the videos from the homework portal. You can have a look at it and try to attempt all this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, child X throws, the first question, child X throws a ball to child Y, the system consists of the ball and their children on the earth. What is true for the system? And the ball has been caught. Now, momentum of the child is equal to opposite to the moment of child. So, momentum of the child x. Is this possible? Okay, what is the momentum of child x? Now, the mass of the child is m over here. When he throws it, is there a momentum? Okay. So, he throws it with the velocity. Of course, there will be a reaction over here. But later on, this is not moving anyway. Right? The child is not moving over here. So, as a result of it, this is incorrect. This is incorrect. The speed of rotation of the earth will be changed. Because of this, why should it change? When can the speed of rotation of the earth change? The speed of rotation. Okay. Two, uh, two persons are standing over here. When they are playing here, now this does not impart any other force over here. So definitely, okay, the speed of rotation will not have changed. And then the ball has no momentum while it is in here. Completely wrong. Because you know this has a mass, this has a velocity, and hence you should have m into v. So therefore, this is this uh, this will have a momentum. The total momentum of the system has not changed. Now comes the question. Okay, this is incorrect. So you can say this is the obvious is the right, the right one. But let us validate this also. Total momentum of the system has not changed. See, he, she throws like this and he receives it. Now, while doing this, what kind of forces do we have? These are all due to internal forces. Okay. So whenever do we have internal forces, whenever we have internal forces, then what happens is the momentum does not, momentum is seen to be conserved. Right. So therefore, now, the right option is D. Next. A parachutist of total mass 70 kgs. Mass is given to you. Mass is given. Falls vertically through the air. Falls vertically. I always try to put across some pictures. Otherwise, I do not get the answers correctly. Through the air at a constant speed. Now, this is moving at a constant speed. V, which is 8 meter per second. Now, what is the mass here? 70 kg. When you have 70 kg, the force acted on this is 70 multiplied by G, which is equal to 700 Newtons. Okay. What is the total upward force on a parachute? Very simple. So if 700 Newtons is acting like this, 700 Newtons would act upwards also. Why upwards? The reason is because it's moving with a constant velocity. Okay. When, when the force is acting on a particle is equal and opposite, only then the particle will move with a constant speed. So therefore, D is the right answer. Let us move on to the next one. A stopper of mass 8 grams leaves the opening of a container that contains pressurized gas. Mass is given to you, 8 grams. The stopper accelerates from rest. From rest, u equal to 0. Acceleration is given, okay, which we do not know what is it. And then for a time of 16 milliseconds, t equal to 16 milliseconds, and leaves the container at a speed of 20 meter per second. So v is equal to 20 meter per second. Now you see, u, v, t, what can you get? You can get the acceleration. What is the order of magnitude of the force acting on the stopper? Okay, now let us find out the acceleration. Acceleration is equal to v minus u divided by t, which should be 20 minus 0 divided by 16 milliseconds. For 5s are 20, for 4s are, so this should now be equal to 5 by 4 into 10 to the power of plus 3. Because milli, right? It goes upwards, it becomes plus 3. So what will this answer be? Four, 5 by 4 should be equal to 1.25. 1.25 into 10 cube. Now what is this? This is your acceleration. What do you need here? Force. So for force, what's the formula? M into A. So let us find this. This should be 8 into 1.25 into 10 to the power of minus 3. 10 to the power of minus 3. Why? Because for grams. See? Here it is grams here. Here it is grams. Okay. So I have written 8 into 10 to the power minus 3 into 1.25 into 10 to the power plus 3. This, this goes away. 8 into 1.25 equal to how much? 
8 into 1.25 is nearly 10. 10 Newton, right? So the order of magnitude is 10 power 1 Newton. Hope you understood how to calculate it. Next, what's the best estimate of the diameter of a helium nucleus? Now, if you consider the hydrogen atom, which consists of only one proton, the size of this is nearly of the order of 10 power minus 15 meters. Now, helium nucleus, when you say helium nucleus, it consists of two protons and two neutrons. So, as a result of it, you can have, let us say, PN, PN, linear molecule. Can be linear? No, it has to be circular. Okay, but if by chance, if I consider that is the complete nucleus like this over here, then also the answer could have been this is 10, okay, 10 power minus 15. So 10 power minus 15 multiplied by 8, 8 into 10 power minus 15 meters. Mm -hmm. Why 8? Because this is one R, this is second R, third R, fourth R, fifth R, sixth R, seventh R, eight R. Okay, maximum is seen to be 8 number minus 15. So the order of magnitude should be 10 power minus 15 meters only. Then a motor of efficient input power 160 watt. So 160 watt is given, raises a mass of 8 kg. Mass is given at a constant speed. V is given. What is the efficiency of the system? What is efficiency? Efficiency is power output by power input. Now let us calculate the power here from here. So you have 160 watt, this mass is m, power should now be equal to f divided by t, right? What is f? f is nothing but mg divided by t over here, right? Sorry, not f divided by t, f into s divided by t, f into s divided by t. What is m here? 8 kg, 8 into 10 into displacement. Do we know displacement? No. So let us write this as s by t, which should be 8 into 10 into V, which should now be 8 into 10 into 0 0.5. What is this now? This is the power that I have got. Okay. So what which power is this? Is it the output power or the input power? A motor of input power. So this should be output output power, which should be equal to 40 watts. What is the efficiency? Efficiency is equal to P output by P input. What is output? 40. What is input? Input is 160. Right, so this goes away for ones are for for fours are so to see with the answers one by four. Mm. Or if you take percentage, this should be around 25 percent efficiency as the answer is B. Okay, then finally, we have come to an end for today's lectures. So, let us see some more questions by tomorrow. And uh, if you really like this video, do share and subscribe to my channel for more updates. Thank you.